Okay. Dear panelists, dear participants, um, good evening. I would like to welcome everybody. We are opening our webinar dedicated to macular hole surgery. My name is Tatiana Vanessa. I work in Moscow in uh, ophthalmological department of Central Clinical Hospital of the Presidential Administration. I will moderate, moderate our webinar. I would like to start by introducing our today's panelists. Professor Remzi Avcim, Chairman of Retina Eye Hospital, Bursa, Turkey. Dr. Andriy Ruban, Chairman of Eye Clinic, Ocula Institute of Ophthalmology, Kyiv, Ukraine. Dr. Anton Kalesny, Retinal Department of Federal Fine Microsurgery Federal, Federal State Institution, Moscow, Russia. Dr. Carlos Mateo, the Retina and Vitreous Department of Institute of Ocular Microsurgery, Barcelona, Spain. Thank you for your agreeing and participate and share knowledge. And be, um, uh, the information for participants, we have the chat. Uh, it's at the bottom of your screen. You can write all your questions um, in this chat and we will ask, I will ask our panelists. And before we start discussion, uh, discussing the preferences and approaches of our panelists, I asked Professor Avchin to give the lecture about ethiopathogenesis and uh, basic principles of treatment macular hole, um, of macular hole. The floor is yours, Professor. Uh, thank you. So, good evening, dear moderators, dear, dear moderator, dear colleague. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Avenasova and to our company for inviting me this, to this webinar. It's a great pleasure for me to share my experience with you today. And today I will speak about idiopathic macular hole, everything in about idiopathic macular hole, idiopathogenesis, classification, and uh, treatment. As you know, idiopathic macular hole is a relatively rare condition. The incidence is about 18, 100,000 per year, and the prevalence is about 3 in 10,000 population. Females are more most uh, affect than males, and we observe this uh, uh, disease mostly in six to eight decades. And bilateral involvement in patients with PVD is less than 10%, but patient without PVD, it may increase up to 30%. So the posterior vitreous separation played an important role on the uh, development of uh, macular hole. And uh, during, uh, usually it may become a, a complication of PVD at its early stage. And this early stage, tangential and anterior posterior vitreoretinal traction of the posterior hyoid on the periphery may cause uh, macular hole formation. So this wide angle OCT, BISC and OCT image show clearly the relation between posterior hyaline separation and the macular hole formation. And also before the formation of macular hole, we may observe shallow um, elevation of the center of the fovea in BISC CISC and OCT as you see in these pictures. So after gas classification, International Vitreo Macular Traction Study Group made the OCT-based classification very recently. And in this classification, the first stage is vitreo macular adhesion. And in this stage, we may observe adhesion of the posterior hyaloid to the center of the fovea, but without distortion of the center of the foveal contour. And in the second stage, we call this vitreo macular traction. And we, in this stage, we observe distortion of foveal contour on, uh, or uh, on the center of the fovea also, or, and or we may observe structural change in the, uh, in the, uh, up, uh, in the sand, uh, in, inside of the central retina. So in the third stage, the full thickness macular hole develop. Uh, at the beginning, maybe a small hole with or without operculum, and uh, in time, it may enlarge as you see in this slide. So, what about the treatment? As you know, the first successful surgery was introduced by Kelly and Mendel more than 30 years ago. They only applied posterior highlight separation and gas tamponade uh, with their technique, but then complete feeling, 360 degree peeling of the ILM in the macular hole surgery became a standard procedure and for many years we applied this technique. However, the results with this technique were not so encouraging in challenging case. What is challenging case? 
Uh, challenging cases, large macular hole, more than 400 uh, micron, a chronic macular hole, recurrent, myopic, traumatic macular hole, also in pediatric macular hole. And in, uh, in this group of patients with standard island peeling technique, anatomic results, success rate is less than 50% and functional success even worse. And therefore, during the last two decades, several surgical techniques have been published to treatment of this group of patients. We can summarize the surgical technique as a laser treatment around the macular hole, biologic adjuvants, gas tamponade, silicon oil, heavy silicon oil tamponade, inverted flap technique, and autologous or heterologous graft. And today, I mainly uh, focus uh, autologous thrombocyte concentrate and uh, recently developed autologous uh, retinal uh, transplantation and amniotic membrane graft, and finally, inverted flap technique. So biologic adjuvants. And uh, in biologic adjuvants, they stimulate macular hole closure via glial cell proliferation in the center of the fovea. And uh, autologous platelet concentrate became more popular in this group of adjuvants. So again, during the last 25 years, we have we observe, uh, found several uh, many studies with this technique. And when we look at the anatomic and functional results, anatomic results with this autolog thrombosis uh, concentrate is really high. But unfortunately, visual result is not as good as anatomic result. And therefore, this technique uh, did not come, uh, did not well, uh, widely accepted today. And uh, recently, very recently, autoretinal transplantation uh, was published by Tamir Mahmoud and Greenwald two years ago. In their first case report, uh, they, um, as you know, they uh, implant a piece of full thickness sensor retina, uh, which is taken from usually from superior temporal quadrant is implanted in the macular hole area. This is the OCT of the first case. You can see the implanted uh, retina part on the macular area and they reported uh, significant visual improvement in this patient. And then a multi-center uh, study design with this technique and for to one eyes with primary failed vitrectomy and ILM peeling. Anatomic success result again is very high, almost 90%, but functional result is not as good anatomic results. They observe improvement in visual equity about this one third of the patient and uh, more than 20% of the patient has visual disturbance. And with this technique in summary, improved whole closure rate, but limited, limited functional gain. And as some example from this study, this is pre on post of vision, uh, <coughs> OCT you can see, and also you can see the visual improvement in this case, but however, another case with a well uh, anatomic closure, but not significant visual improvement. Usually in this uh, study, they observe partial restoration of uh, in the external limiting membrane and also elliptic, ellipsoid uh, zone. So the question is with this technique, is it a simple patch or more than a simple patch? We don't know the answer of this question yet, but in my personal thought, I think that it's not more than a simple patch, but this is my personal thought. So we will need some further studies to see the results of this technique. Uh, the other new technique is a human amnion membrane implantation. So this is not, uh, in fact, is not new technique. And in 1987, uh, Xapote and uh, others reported their first result in Journal of Ophthalmologica. And in their article, they noted that amnion implantation can be regarded today as the most suitable operation for a macular hole, and it should be undertaken as the first operation. And after uh, more than a uh, half decade, after more than half decade of the study, uh, recently uh, Rizzo Group uh, updated this uh, technique and they apply a piece of amnion uh, membrane implantation to the macular area and use silicon oil or gas tamponades. And first they reported there two years ago, the first series of uh, in eight patients with recurrent macular hole and they obtain really good anatomic and functional results. And then they apply the same tactic in macular, myopic macular hole and macular detachment case in 10 patients. Again, the results was really encou encouraging. Also, they uh, observed macular hole closure with the neurosensor retina or filling the macular uh, overfilling the human amniotic membrane and also observe the resorption of human amniotic membrane remnants uh, in time, uh, at the, uh, for example, in this patient, um, uh, 11 months after uh, surgery. And they assume that 
Human amniotic membrane may offer a stable support such as basal membrane, driving, slicing of the retinal layers and photoreceptors. So these results are really encouraging, but today we have only uh, the results of Rizzo group is a center, only one cent, uh, central results. And therefore we need another study, multi-center study to see the visual fu functional results with this technique. So uh, the other technique is inverted ion flap technique. As you know, this is a relatively uh, older technique than others. And it first uh, described has been made by Michaleska et al in 10 years ago, and they apply and today we call this technique classic or multi-layer 360 degree ILM flap and they peel ILM all around the macular hole and inverted ILM into the hole as multi-layers. And then several modifications have been published such as insertion group in this uh, technique. The ILM was inserted into the hole area as you see here or single layer inversion different direction from temporal flap, inferior, superior, and pedicle flap. In this technique, only we uh, invert the ILM as a single layer over the macular hole without uh, peeling the ILM around the macular hole. And in this group, temporal inverted flap became uh, popular recently. So in the literature, I found four studies uh, which comparing the anatomic and functional results with classic ILM peeling and with classic lab technique, and they obtain better anatomic result, but visual improvement is limited with this technique. So in all this technique, in two technique, multi-layer classic inverted flap and insertion technique, and anatomic result is really good. We can observe glial, uh, the ILM in the whole area may provide glial plaque filling, but uh, usually we observe partial recovery of the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane. And Iwasaki and Botoni reported their uh, results with this two technique and with very limited complete recovery of ellipsoid zone external limiting uh, membrane. So they assume that uh, in this technique, the ILM, which is inside layer, is the whole area may prevent uh, restoration of ret sensor retinal layers in this technique. And then single layer temporal inverted, uh, single layer inverted flap technique developed. And this is both eyes of the same patient. One of these eyes already operated with this uh, temporal inverted flap technique. As you see, it's hardly differentiate which eye is operated or which eye is normal eye. This was the right eye, the uh, operated eye. And this is the four surgery, more than 800 micron macular hole you can see here, and this is after surgery, and it's almost normal macular conjugation and complete ellipsoid zone, extended limiting membrane uh, zone uh, rec uh, uh, recovery we can observe in this patient with temporal, on the temporal inverted flap technique, and also we obtain comparable uh, macropermic results comparing the normal fellow eyes, and visually actually improving this patient from 2400 to 2025. So, we publish our comparative results uh, with conventional ILM peeling and temporal inverted flap technique uh, last year in, in the journal, European Journal of Ophthalmology, and we define It's interactive part of our webinar. You can see the picture or see the image with the macular hole with diameter of 306 microns. And um, now, for the polling, I would like to ask our participants and panelists to vote by choose the part of the surgical procedure that they personally prefer, the part of their choice. Choice. I will list them. Uh, you see the poll. First question, which technique would you choose to close the... Uh, mm -hmm. Professor Avci, are you I'm with sorry, us? A, yeah. Uh, I'm now with you, but there's some uh, internet problem. If you want, I can continue uh, uh, or I can continue later on. What do you want? I'm um, sorry. Could you continue later when you sure. will show us your presentation? Okay. Could I ask you to vote with us? Um, the image, the if you have the patient with this uh, OCT uh, image with um, middle size macular hole, which technique would you choose to close this um, full thickness macular hole? No island peeling, island peeling, converted flap, pre flap. I have a different approach. Please choose. And the second question, which kind of biological adjuvant would you choose to close the 
306 micron micron the hole, please. I ask all participants to do it. The third question, which kind of endotamponate would you choose to close this macular hole? Yeah, SF6, CYF6, and C3, uh, 4 7 8 and silicon oil. Which additional manipulation would you choose to close this hole? Fifth question, which phase down mode do you recommend after making a hole repair? Less one day, one, three days, four, five, six, seven, more than seven days, OCT dependent. And the last question, what size of retinal tools do you use for making a hole surgery? Do we have the results? Oh, the most popular, uh, ILM peeling. But we have 12% without ILM peeling and ACP. And no, the most, the most popular is uh, without any biological adherence, uh, air tamponade and 82% no additional manipulations, less than one day, and 25 gauge is more popular. It's interesting, thank you. And uh, the next image, now you can see this size, the bigger size of making the whole 755 microns please answer the same questions. Which technique would you choose if you have this big size of macula hole, your, your patient? Which kind of adherence would you choose if you choose? Which kind of endotamponate? First question about additional manipulations. timing of prone position and what gauge do you prefer? Can we see the results? It's interesting. Okay, the most popular technique is uh, for bigger size with inverted flap, uh, PRP, PRP prefers more than ACP and um, air tamponade without any manipulations, uh, more days for face down position one and three days. And again, 25 uh, gauge surgery. Thank you very much. And now we turn to our, uh, to Professor Avchin as a lecturer and um, as a speaker, first speaker. I think you can um, continue your lecture and after that uh, you will present your uh, report and we have the question from audience have you experience with temporal flap and i know that your uh, the answer is your presentation okay so. great so i think can you hear me now everything is okay yes okay thank you i'm so sorry for internet uh, connection problems so in our uh, study we uh, define in uh, two groups compare the two mentioned island peeling and the temporal immersive flap technique and we 
uh, uh, compare the closure rate and mean basculature visuality, closure patterns such as U shape, V shape, or flat open or W shape, the restoration of ellipsoidal ex external limiting membranes, and ILF flap configuration and regularity with C scan or CT, as you see here, and also retinal sensitivity in both sides. We of can't see. Other. We can't see your presentation. You can't see the, my presentation. Yeah. Okay, let me share the screen. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Can you see now? Yes. Okay, sorry. So, so okay, with this technique, and uh, we look closure rates, mean best correct visuality, closure pattern, restoration of ellipses on external limiting membrane. Island flap configuration and regularity with C scan mode and uh, retinal sensitivity in both sides on unpeeled and peeled side of macular hole. So, the mac the, in the basic uh, baseline, the macular hole size was similar in two groups, more than uh, is about 650 micron, and the hole closure rate and the mean best character visual act was significantly better in ILMP uh, inverted flap uh, technique in this our study, and also complete restoration of ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane was significantly higher in the inverted flap technique comparing the other technique. And also in our uh, series, you observe mostly U-shaped closing pattern in 80% of patient in uh, ILM flap group uh, in only 5% in standard ILM peeling group. And also uh, the uh, configuration of uh, ILM flap uh, visualizes with C scan mode of and phase OCT mode of OCT and geography. You can see the um, uh, ILM flap uh, configuration, also the peeled area. You can see the uh, retinal dimples with a, as a dark spot on the ILM peeled area. And uh, this is smooth flap. And in some patients, we observe wrinkling of this flap, especially in patients with mild, mild RM retinal membrane proliferation. And in some patients, we observe folded retinal flap. Usually in folded retinal flap, we observe in one case, if we couldn't manage to uh, invert flap uh, smoothly as a single layer and during surgery, we can observe this folded ILM uh, in our emphasis uh, 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 OCT. So uh, what about the anatomic uh, the functional results? Fortunately, the functional result, the retinal sensitivity was, there's no difference between nasal and temporal micropyramidry, uh, side of the micropyramidry results. So this is mean that uh, the ILM peeling uh, does not affect the functional results in our study. So this is an uh, example from conventional ILM peeling method. You can see I, 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 macular hole uh, closure, but without uh, complete recovery of ellipsoid zone and extended membrane. This is another patient example from inverted flap group with complete uh, uh, recovery of ellipsoid zone and extended limiting membrane. You can see ILM flap configuration also here. So this technique give a chance both surgeon and patient to do the reparation with same technique. For example, this patient is more than 1,000 micron large macular holes. We apply surgery with a single inverted flap technique. And unfortunately, the hole is not closed. When we go to second surgery, when we stain the ILM with a brilliant blue, and we observe that the ILM is re-inverted to original position, and the second surgery, we just re-inverted the flap again over the macular hole. It takes only 10 minutes. Uh, this is pre first on the reoperation staining. On the reoperation staining, we observe a little contraction of ILM flap, and this is before surgery. Uh, four weeks after surgery, you can see the bridging of ILM both side uh, age of the macular hole, and also eight weeks after surgery, you can see the gradual feeling of um, uh, macular hole area underneath of ILM with glial proliferation, also gradual recovery of micropyramidic results. So we also apply this inverted flap technique in iatrogenic, very large macular hole in this patient is about 1500 micron. This is a week after surgery. You can see flat open uh, closing of the macular hole. This is third month after, uh, three months after uh, surgery, still silicone oil is inside of the eye, complete closing of hole. And this is four months after silicone oil removal. You can see macular hole is closed, but unfortunately the visual acuity is not uh, good, only is, uh, 0.1 visual improvement with uh, glial proliferation on the center of the macula. So 
what is this uh, trips and ticks and trips uh, in my side uh, with this inverted lab technique? I usually pay attention to invert ILM flap as a single smooth layer over the macular hole area. And therefore, uh, we should pay attention to use a drop of perfluorocarbon liquid during the surgery to fold the flap, to keep the folded flap as a single layer during surgery, and to stabilize the folded flap during the fluid air exchange. And another uh, tips and you should perform fluid air exchange slowly and carefully and make sure you remove all fluid before removing to the PFCL bubble. And the other one is we should ensure immediate and strict face down positioning after surgery to prevent the inversion of flap to original position. So uh, with this technique, with sing, uh, single layer inverted lab technique, we achieve superior results comparing the complete ILM peeling technique. Even though we do not peel ILM around the macular hole, uh, so in the light of this information, the widely accepted hypothesis that the ILM peeling increased the closure rate of macular holes by relieving the tangential forces of, on fovea might become questionable and will need to be revised. So in conclusion, uh, autologue thrombocyte concentrates improve anatomic results but limited visual gain and autologs retinal transplantation improve anatomic results, but functional results we don't know yet. We need further studies for this. And human amniotic membrane graft, it's limited number of cases in the literature. We have only a single center results and technically procedure is relatively difficult and improve anatomic results about visual gain, we need further studies, motor studies, and other surgeons' experience. And single layer inverted ILM, inverted ILM flap technique, on the literature, we have yet enough evidence that uh, this technique improve anatomic, morphologic, and functional results in uh, challenging cases. And uh, with this uh, information, single layer ILM inverted flap technique should be a first choice of treatment in challenging cases such as large macular hole, myopic holes, also in recurrent case who have been operated previously, inverted flap technique where the ILM is, is still there. And even in my practice, I apply this technique in all patients, in all kinds of macular holes as a primary procedure, because still I believe that this technique is less traumatic compared to the complete peeling of 363 peeling of ILM technique, standard technique. And the other feeling or the other uh, graft technique uh, may prefer for all failed cases where ILM is peeled. So this is the end of my study. Thank you for your attention. Again, sorry for the uh, interruption of internet connections. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Archer, for this uh, useful and uh, interesting lecture. I think you can continue with your presentation. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary to return to fundamental knowledge from time to time for all of us. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. So uh, now I will show some uh, uh, examples, uh, video examples to show the surgical techniques. As you know, uh, this is standard um, uh, technique with 360 degree ILM peeling. And usually in my technique, I use small bubble of PFCL uh, to protect uh, RPE from the dye toxicity. And in all my case, I use Brilliant Blue, which is the perfect uh, staining material. And you can see clearly. And I, Exposure Can you share the, the screen? You don't okay, see. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Is it okay yeah. now? Yeah, now it's okay. Okay. So this uh, standard technique, we can uh, continue with this technique. And I use PFCL bubble to cover the macular hole area to protect the RP on the macular hole area from the dye toxicity. And then uh, I use brilliant blue and exposure to brilliant blue about 30 seconds or 45 seconds. And during this staining, I do not close infusion and you usually prefer 27 gauge. In 27 gauge system, there is no turbulence during the staining, and therefore, I do not close the infusion. As you see, we, uh, stay, uh, peel this 360 degree. If you want, we can enlarge this. In insertion technique, in large macular hole use, we usually used it, but I used to use this uh, previously, but now I do not use this technique anymore because of the functional results. And this patient is 
been operated with this technique. And after a 360 degree peeling off, again, I apply PFCL bubble over the macular hole area, then a brilliant blue, blue staining, about 30 second exposure, then uh, 360 degree peeling of uh, ILM, and uh, then uh, shorten the uh, ILM flap with vitrectomy cutter. And finally, I insert all the ILM around the macular hole into the hole. This is the insertion technique as you see in these pictures and under PFCL bubble, then I perform fluid air exchange and uh, keep the patient face down position for five days after surgery. This is uh, after surgery, the macular hole is closed, but there's irregular closing and there is also a cleft in the center of uh, the closing area because of the uh, ILM layers on the whole area. And this ILM layers may prevent uh, restoration of sensor retinal layers, as you see in this picture. Usually with this, with this technique, we observe double shape, uh, irregular closing pattern and uh, with uh, not complete, that we don't observe complete recovery of ellipsoid zone and external limiting membranes. So what about temporal inverted lab technique? Again, I apply a small piece of uh, perfluorocarbon bubble, then apply dye and remove. Then I create a crescent on the temporal part of the uh, macula, about 180 degree uh, crescent, then manage to invert flap as a single piece, a small a single layers over the macular hole, but I do not cross the edge of the macular hole with peeling. I stop uh, before uh, reaching the edge of macular hole. Then uh, after a PFCL bubble, then remove the air. And this is this patient that I already uh, presented in my talk. And this patient has 20-25 um, visual acuity. So we can apply this stage patient, uh, this technique also in reoperation in failed case previously. For example, this patient that we operate the same technique, all these videos about 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And this is not really difficult technique. We never touch the nasal part, only apply a uh, peel the element the temporal part and do the same thing. But unfortunately the uh, macular is not closed. It was still open as you see, because we couldn't manage this patient face down position immediately after surgery. And during second surgery, when we stay in the eye, we observe the ILM is on the original uh, part. There's a little contraction. This second surgery takes only 10 minutes to do the same manipulation. Again, fluid air exchange and face down position. And after second surgery, this is before, this is four weeks after second surgery, you can see the breach of ILM. And eight weeks after surgery, we observe gradual feeling of a uh, macular hole area with glial proliferation underneath the ILM uh, flap and also gradual improvement of microperimetry. This is uh, first surgery and reoperation. You can see the ILM flap is little contracted. Also, we apply this patient uh, as a reoperation uh, in uh, failed case. For example, this patient uh, referred uh, to us with uh, as a failed macular hole surgery. And uh, when his doctor suggested the second operation, the patient applied to our clinic. And when we see the hole was uh, 600 micron, it was open, still open because this is uh, three weeks after the previous surgery. When we apply this uh, emphasis OCD, we, we can uh, see the A, uh, ILM peeling area, and you can imagine this is the area is the best where the ILM is peeled because the dimples start to uh, develop here and this area. And then we uh, think that we may uh, uh, create another I ILM flap from superior part and we may invert it over the macular hole. And when we stain the, this eye uh, with brilliant blue and we observe the same picture as we guess with uh, emphasis OCT after staining of the uh, macular area, we observe this is the ILM peeled area and this is our unpeeled area. And we create temporal inverted flap from superior and uh, inverted this flap to the over the macular uh, whole area. So not in all case, in case with large Mac ILM uh, peeling uh, already have been uh, applied, it's not possible, but in such patient with small ILM peeling uh, patients, we may apply this patient also in failed case and do the same things and 
after fluid, again, always pay attention to uh, uh, cover the macular area as a single phase uh, uh, layers. This is three weeks after surgery. The best corrective visual to improve 2040. And you can see also almost normal macular configuration. There is little uh, uh, empty area on the macular area. And uh, then also this uh, empty area is uh, filled with clear proliferation. This is MFAS OCT after surgery. You can see the island flap area. And this is before and after surgery OCT and geography. You can see the um, uh, foveal vascular zone became normal uh, appearance. This is the last case. We apply the surgery with this iatrogenic joint macular hole patients and be together with severe PVR. And this is very, there was a very difficult case. There was PVR on the posterior pole, also on the periphery of the retina. After peeling off the membrane on the posterior pole, we uh, apply a fluid air exchange and make a staining under uh, PFCL bubble again, close the hole with the PFCL bubble. First, remove the epiretinal membrane, then uh, invert the ILM from the temporal side to the uh, uh, nasal part or the macular hole area, then manage to uh, uh, peeling the uh, membrane from the uh, vitreous space and clean the vitreous space. And this is the end of surgery. This first week after surgery, you can see flat open closing of the macular hole, but in three months after silicone oil injection surgery, this you can see the macular hole area is gradually closed with glial perforation. Also, we can see some uh, layers and some uh, partial recovery of ellipsoid zone. This is four months after silicone oil removal. Vision improved to 0.1. You can see closure of macular area. So uh, in summary, uh, inverted flap technique may be a really good solution, as I mentioned in my theoretical uh, talk, in the first part of my talk, in most of the patient, only we can uh, cannot do this technique in patient with a uh, large area of ILM peeling uh, have been performed already. In such patient, we may prefer peeling uh, or graft uh, technique for, for the treatment of this case. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Avci. It's a very informative, beautiful presentation. Um, am I right that um, blind uh, cell proliferation is more orderly if you use uh, inverted flap temporarily. Could, could Without um, the proliferation, the uh, ellipsome zone will be more um, orderly. The, uh, th this line on OCT and the function on the result if you use temporal site. Yeah. So I mean, not the temporal side, uh, um, uh, Tatiana, only uh, the key point is that we should use single layer inversion, single layer inverted technique. It may, may be temporal, superior, nasal. We do not have any evidence uh, that we did not compare this different technique. But uh, the important point that if we do inverted flap technique, we pay attention to invert flap as a smooth and single layer without folding, without uh, in, uh, inserting into the macular hole area. And in our experience, if you pay this attention, this we really obtain good uh, anatomic, also a good functional result with a high rate of complete uh, recovery. Thank you. We have several questions from and participants. Carlos, I think yeah. I have a question. Why? I, I don't understand why you prefer, you know, temporal side because you know at the end the temporal side is by far thinner than the nasal side, for example. And and why don't you use, uh, you know, superior flap that you you you, you describe it? You know, uh, why not to use superior flap? The patient goes out all the way from the OR, and then you know he's looking forward, and the air presses the flap, and that's done. You know, well, why 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 not superior to inferior? And you prefer temporal. That you, if you, if you make an OCT and you uh, look at the ganglion cell layers, you will see how over time these dumbbells they go down and the ganglion cell layers will be lower and lower and thinner and thinner and thinner. Why you prefer temporal side? Okay, Carlos, this is a good question. But my uh, idea, my um, uh, tech, why I prefer temporal side because uh, I still believe that ILM peeling is traumatic. Uh, surgery. When we peel ILM, we remove some part of Mueller cells, and and in most in almost all patients after ILM peeling, we observe like three to four weeks after surgery, we observe retinal dimples, which uh, go 
or uh, until the uh, uh, jury, uh, uh, which uh, go uh, through the whole uh, uh, thickness of retinal nerve fiber layers. And therefore, if uh, I would like to uh, keep nasal part, which is uh, functionally important, which transfer the macular function to the optic nerve, I prefer, I pay attention to nasal part is untouched part during my surgery. Therefore, I prefer temporal inverted flap. But I do, it's, uh, in our uh, study, the sensitivity of both temporal and nasal part of patient was not different statistically. But still, I believe that this technique, this island peeling is traumatic uh, surgery. And therefore, I prefer temporal part to not to uh, disturb the vision uh, transferring from macular area to the optic nerve. Yeah, thank you. Um, how does your approach of using inverted flap uh, depends on du the duration or the macular hole? Yeah, uh, first I start to uh, apply this technique in challenging case in large macular holes especially in large macular holes. Then also, Carlos also mentioned about the myopic macular holes. Also now today, I will use this technique in myopic macular holes. But uh, now in my daily practice, I apply this technique in all macular hole, even a small macular hole uh, as a primary procedure because I optimize my surgery, I standardize my surgery and the surgical technique with 27 gauge system takes only uh, 20, 25 minutes to peeling its temporal ILF, invert island flap. And therefore, uh, and I had, I had a really uh, uh, very high uh, success rate uh, with this technique. And therefore, uh, I do not peel uh, ILM 360 degree in my practice anymore uh, more now. And, but at the beginning, I start with a challenging case with large macular holes is my epics. But today I apply this technique in all case with as a primary procedure. And as a secondary procedure, if the patient has still ILM over the macular area, like, and the patient is have been operated with this technique previously, but it is failed case. And usually in this failed case, we observe reinversion of ILM flap to the its original position. The second surgery is very simple. It's very easy to only, you can, the, all the, is already the vitrectomized eyes, you can go in the vitreous cavity and just peel the ILM from the same position and uh, invert it over the macular hole again. Also the other patient that I show, if the ILM is peeled is small uh, diameters and we apply still this technique and we cre create uh, inverted flap uh, from the closest uh, quadrant of uh, ILM which is closed to macular hole, we can create inverted flap this technique. But except it, if the patient has large area of macular hole, uh, ILM is peeled already, we have several cases like that. In this patient, there is no chance uh, to do this technique and we should, uh, in this technique, we should, uh, case we should prefer uh, amnion membrane or autologretinal splinter or platelet-rich plasma, we can uh, try. But except this group, we can, uh, apply this technique as a, a non-traumatized technique, as a simple technique, as also time-consuming uh, saving uh, technique. Thank you. When do you remove PFCL? Uh, just after staining or during air fluid exchange? Yeah. As you notice in my technique, I used PFCL two times. And at the beginning, during, before the staining to close the macular hole area, I close the macular hole with PFCL and to not stain the RP during uh, the staining period. Then I remove the PFCL, this PFCL, then create a, a ILM flap, and then use again a large bubble of PFCL to keep the ILM flap uh, over the macular hole area and to keep the flap as a single layers. But this, this period takes about 10 minutes because after this, I look at the periphery of the vitreous and do some vitrectomies. And during this like 10 minutes, uh, the um, uh, PFCL bubble helps to temporary attachment of ILM flap over the macular hole area. And then during the fluid area exchange, uh, the ILM flap is not re-emerged easily. And this is the, uh, the, the other benefit of a uh, large PFCL bubble during surgery. And then I remove all uh, PFCL bubble during fluid area exchange. First, I remove all the fluid. Then uh, finally, I remove uh, PFCL bubble. And 
pay, keep the patient face down position, turn the patient face down position immediately after surgery, even on surgical table, then finished all, uh, aspirate all fluid and um, um, also a PFCL bubble. And then I keep the patient's position a uh, little bit uh, tangentially, like if I operate the right eye, I turn the patient's face to the left and uh, finish all that the rest of the job during this position, that gas exchange and remove trocar, and then uh, rotate the patient through the face down position and never uh, keep the patient face up again. Because in the first, oh, I have only one case that it's failed case with this technique. It was patient that I operated this patient during life surgery in our country and it was under general anesthesia and we couldn't keep the patient face down position immediately after surgery and in that patient the island flap is reinverted or the original position again. So the other point that if we, you do, if we apply this technique it's better to uh, do surgery in local anesthesia instead of general anesthesia. It's mm -hmm. not possible with general anesthesia to keep the patient immediately after surgery face down position. Thank you. How many hours do they lay down continuously just after the operation? Uh, the, uh, this is my experience. I, I, had, I, don't, I don't have any comparative results, but the first six hours is very important. And during the first six hours, I pay attention to patient keep up, keep their face up position as much as possible. The mean that they can uh, eat or go to the toilet, it doesn't matter, but always keep the patient's face, to, face up uh, down position. Then, uh, the first three days is also important, but the first six hours, six to eight hours, is uh, more important uh, to uh, obtain uh, good results. Thank you. Uh, what kind of macular le uh, lens for macular surgery do you use? From Biome or contact yeah, lens? Th this is IBOS 2 from Müller-Weller from uh, Huckstride company. I use this uh, system more than uh, 25 years and I'm really uh, get used to use this system, but I know there are many different uh, like biome or the other good system, but in my hand, this is that I have really, really had a good experience with this IBOS 2 system. And I use mm -hmm. also IBOS 2 uh, with wide angle lens, not 90 diopters, 120 diopter lens. And I do all my uh, macular surgery in non-contact system and a uh, large uh, diopter uh, lens. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Avci. Could I ask the same question for all panelists? Dr. Matteo, what kind of lens do you use? Rimsi knows my answer already. Uh, you know, I always uh, use a contact-wide system and under, under the recite, but contact, uh, it's a special system I have. I think I'm only in the only in the world, but you know, for macro surgery, I always use contact lenses, always, you know. My, you know, I prefer, uh, you know, have a, you know, smaller visual field, but, you know, a impressive stereopsis. And, you know, I, uh, you will see in the videos, you, 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 you see what, what's the patient is thinking, you know, because <laughs> stereopsis is amazing. Then, you know, I prefer to do this. I'm not interested in the mid periphery when I'm doing the macro hole, for example, or in the peripheral membrane. Then I use contact mainly. Uh, contact. Thank you. Thank you. What is your choice, Dr. Ruben? Uh, I agree with Carlos Mateo. The stereopsis is more, more, most important things when I operate a macular hole. I agree. I, I prefer also contact lenses. Thank you. So I only, yeah. I'm, let, let me say some things. I prefer contact lens, except I forgot that. I'm sorry. Only in a myopic macular hole case. These are really very unique case. It's hardly possible to visualize uh, this technique is uh, in uh, ILM in, uh, in these patients with uh, white posterior staphyloma. I use contact lens, but except my whole macular hole cases, I use a non contact system. Thank you. And Dr. Kalesnik, what do you prefer? I totally agree with uh, the cases uh, of myopic uh, macular hole. So it, will be very, it is very valuable to use contact lens, uh, but in routine daily practice, I don't use any contact lenses, so no contact system, just a wide, uh, wide angle lens. Thank you. And you are our next speaker. Yeah. Can you share the screen and show our, your presentation for us? Okay. 
So can I start? Yeah, please. Hi, Carl. Uh, I would say many thanks uh, for my invitation for your company and especially for you, Dr. Tatiana Vanessa. Thank you very much. So good evening. Let me introduce uh, some complicated cases uh, from Apple, uh, so in for surgery. Uh, so, uh, since uh, Freeport microsurgery uh, vitrectomy was used for treatment of uh, vitrectomy phase diseases, uh, surgical techniques uh, uh, and instrumentation have been uh, rapidly improved in the past decade. Uh, however, uh, there are complicated vitrectomy cases that cannot be successfully treated, uh, even with state of the art surgery, such as a chronic, persistent, and uh, refractory macular holes, myopic macular holes, and uh, lamellar holes. Um, and as you know, inverted uh, or free LM flap and its modifications, uh, and uh, also uh, autologous plasma are among the uh, um, alternatives uh, suggested to be effective. Uh, so, platelet rich plasma is plasma with a high concentration of platelets. Uh, it contains a large amount of proteins, which hastens the body's uh, natural healing process uh, by enhancing the directed cell migration, uh, proliferation, and differentiation. So PRP is usually prepared one hour or less uh, before the surgery, and uh, the surgical technique uh, with PRP includes uh, uh, the same steps, uh, with rectomy, uh, lamp peeling, uh, air, uh, fluid uh, air exchange uh, and uh, um, application of PLP. Uh, so uh, just a few cases. Uh, the first case is um, uh, Leonard Hall, uh, uh, 48 years, uh, uh, 48 year old female. Um, I came to our department after reporting several months of increased visual acuity and metamorphopsia. Uh, so, uh, uh, the surgery uh, uh, was performed in the pseudophagic eye, uh, had a regular vitrectomy, is performed with a careful detachment of the posterior hyaloid. Uh, this is not my case, so you see a contact lens here. Uh, membrane blue dual uh, was injected into, onto the LM for approximately 15 seconds. And uh, dye-assisted ILM uh, peeling was uh, then performed uh, within uh, the arcade. And uh, finally, air fluid exchange uh, was done with a PLP application uh, on the macular surface. Uh, so this is a result in uh, one month's best corrected visual equity significantly improved and uh, post-operative uh, OCT showed a closer, a closer of macular hole. And we had a stable result in the one year uh, follow-up period. Uh, so I would say uh, show the next uh, next um, case. This is a uh, full sickness uh, macular hole uh, uh, and high myopia. Uh, so uh, uh, OCT shows uh, uh, measuring macular hole measuring up to uh, 800 uh, microns uh, with the intra uh, retinal cyst. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, case, uh, standard uh, 25 gauge uh, free port uh, vitrectomy. Core vitrectomy was performed for, uh, by the induction of uh, posterior vitreous and um, presence of it of uh, PVD was uh, confirmed with the use of intravitreal triamcinolone. Uh, the internal limiting membrane was uh, stained uh, with dual membrane blue dye and uh, a large internal uh, limiting membrane uh, peeling of two disc diameters uh, was created with the help of uh, forceps. Uh, was performed in a uh, centripetal direction, uh, step by step. Um, as you see, uh, to try uh, to gather ILM uh, specimens in foveal area and uh, complete its uh, uh, removal. And following that, fluid air uh, exchange was performed. And after a few uh, uh, minutes, uh, two free droplets of autologous plasma uh, were injected on the macular surface to fulfill the macular hole. So this is the result. Uh, as one month after surgery, the macular hole was closed. Uh, the hole was shown to be completely sealed uh, by the PLP button. 
um, was 18 ages. Uh, one month later, BC wave was uh, 0 0.5, and uh, the button was uh, resolved slowly uh, until the third post-operative month and uh, replaced by narrow glial uh, proliferation, which closed the hole completely. Uh, the surgery and post-operative period was uh, free of uh, complications. Uh, the next case is about vitreomacular traction syndrome, uh, bursting in the brain and uh, neuroepithelium detachment, and uh, uh, the best uh, correct visual acuity was quite low, and uh, fundus examination revealed the dull foveal reflex with vitreous um, uh, traction, maculopathy, and the CT revealed the present membrane with uh, macular traction and detachment up to uh, 820 microns. Uh, so this is a surgery after 25 gauge uh, core vitrectomy. Um, anterior posterior vitreous traction was removed uh, as completely and safety as possible. And uh, then we used a uh, vitrector in uh, aspiration mode. And after that, uh, we use a forceps to reduce tractional forces on the foveal area and uh, then performed a separation around the uh, vitro metal or attachment. And uh, after this, after um, uh, dual blue staining, uh, we create an um, ILM flap uh, with 25 uh, gauge forceps near the vascular arcade and uh, peel it off uh, several uh, pieces passing to the central of fovea. You see a detached area. And uh, after we uh, peeled and to collect an uh, LM uh, specimens uh, uh, in the center, the LM was completely removed them. And uh, surgery was uh, finished with uh, air gas tamponade and face down uh, position. So what we get here uh, seems not bad, but uh, you see this tiny hole, tiny defect. Um, uh, and um, the same, uh, we, uh, we have a detachment in the center area, uh, a bit less, uh, near 780 uh, microns. Uh, so uh, in that situation, we decided to use PRP because of absence of LM also. Um, so the next step, the surgical technique includes a free port sparse plan approach. Um, we inject a dual blue uh, to check residual LM specimens. And uh, after fluid air exchange, uh, we decide to use a 38 uh, gauge cannula uh, to uh, remove subretinal fluid uh, through this uh, tiny defect, tiny hole, and, and a lot of care uh, was taken uh, to engage the edges of uh, the macular hole, uh, not damaging the pigment epithelium also with the instrument firstly, and after the, that performed the application and gas tamponade. Uh, so one month after the operation, OCT showed uh, the absence of the macular hole and decreasing of the neuroepithelium detachment. Uh, so the resolution of the neuroepithelium detachment was finally achieved by the six months. And also the visual equity improved uh, to 0 0.5 by the six months also. So no adverse reactions uh, were associated with the use of PLP here. Uh, so uh, this case has demonstrated that combination of uh, standard traditional surgical techniques uh, with PLP uh, using uh, can help clubs, uh, different types of macular holes. Uh, but, uh, however, these techniques uh, ideally should be uh, tailored for each case, for each patient, uh, not for uh, all clinical cases, of course. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kalesnik. Your results is great. Uh, could I ask you about, uh, is, is it, is that this technique is your routine technique now? Mm, no, of course. Uh, it's uh, I use this technique to, a technique only in uh, complicated cases uh, in macular holes more than six hundred microns uh, microns diameters. I uh, usually um, in daily routine uh, just peeling LM and they are tamponade without any additional manipulation. 
Mm, usually, yes. Uh, also, I used uh, this technique in uh, traumatic uh, heart and retinal rupture uh, in uh, optic uh, uh, pit, optic disc pit surgery. It's also valuable um, to use. But in routine, just peeling. And how many days or hours your patients lay down in face down position? From uh, six, eight uh, hours uh, to one day, maybe. And uh, almost always it is uh, just air of temperature, I you know, guess. Thank you. Uh, how about ethical approval for using these biological adherents? Yeah, but uh, we now work on the law of cell uh, techniques. Uh, if uh, the clinic uh, has uh, a certificate uh, for medical service uh, for work with blood and its component, uh, it is legal. Okay. And because it's autologous and this is part of uh, blood, not, uh, not food. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Mateo, is it on label um, using the biological adherents in Spain? We don't hear you. We only use the platelet rich from the same patient. We use it sometimes. But you, you, you mentioned one thing about the platelet rich plasma. You have, to, have two, two components. One component is proliferation. You have some factors, you know, uh, uh, to proliferate cells. Okay, this is one of them. The other, for me, is the important one, is like a glue. It's like a glue. It's, you know, you, 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 um, you know, try to do it under air. You, you leave a, a bubble of, of, uh, of platelet rich plasma and you will see how it forms like a, like a shield, you know, over the, over the macro hole. And, you know, I think this is the good property for, for these uh, platelet rich plasma use in some cases to maintain the flap in its position. If you put some platelet rich plasma in the macro hole and then you put the inverter flap and you stay there for minutes and you open and you, you don't close the infusion, Ramsey, but you know, even you have fluid moving, you will see how the flap stays there. Because I think there is a, some, you know, uh, you know, glue factor in the platelet rich plasma, but we use it. Not, not to, for the, you know, proliferative factors that these, you know, platelet rich plasma have, because I, I, don't, I don't see that, you know, new cells forming. You, 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 at the end, you have a plaque there. And if you are lucky, you close the hole. And, and of course, we saw the results, wonderful results. But, you know, for me, the interesting part of the platelet rich plasma is the glue. Uh, part of, of, of this in the five units. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalesnik. And uh, the next speaker is Dr. Ruban, Andrea Ruban. Um, the floor is yours. And uh, can you share us? You will see me? Yes. You see. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, it is really great pleasure for me to participate in the Retina Bridges. Thank you, uh, Tatiana, thank Dork, with uh, such a great team. I would like to share our experience with uh, surgical treatment of uh, traumatic macular holes. The incidence rate of traumatic macular hole is not well defined as this condition is uh, relatively rare. Ferenc Kuhn described it in 1.5% uh, of globe closed, uh, closed lobe injuries and about 0.15% of open lobe injuries with a maximum rate after contusion. The first descriptions of macular hole associated with ocular trauma were reported by Herman Knapp and Noyce. And uh, I'm proud that uh, over the 150 years ago, as the Department of Medicine in Kyiv University, Emanuel Mandelstam gave his eye trauma lectures. According to Gas, the most important, most possible important mechanism of formation, traumatic macular holes, involves one or one or combination of the following pathological condition is post-contusion necrosis with kystosis degeneration, subhoidal hemorrhage in conjunction with the choroidal rupture and acute vitreal retinal traction as a result of count-to-cope injury. 
Traumatic macular holes have a higher likelihood of spontaneous closure than idiopathic macular holes. We all know that in about from 10 to uh, 67%. Uh, vitrectomy indicated for those holes that fail to close after a period of duration is average in three months. And only when the surgeon believes that there is a reasonable change of improvement in visual acuity. Uh, the effectiveness of vitrectomy in the treatment of idiopathic macular holes exceed 90%. But traumatic macular holes have long been known to have the worst prognosis, regardless of the surgical technique. And the reason is that the traumatic macular hole can often coexist with other ocular injuries, such as choroidal rupture, subretinal hemorrhage, scar. And uh, up to now, there have been no standard surgical approach to treat traumatic macular holes. Several surgical adjuncts aimed at diminishing tractional forces and promoting hole closure have been proposed. Often, traumatic macular hole surgery requires the non-standard individual operating procedures, especially in cases with choroidal scar and retina choroidal coalescence. For such cases, we propose in publishing retina hydraulics and repetal macular displacement technique, during which BCSS, BCSS injections were combined with dissection of the subretinal adhesion with the scissors or needle through the macular hole. After such operation, retinotomy sites were only being visible on the outer fluorescent images and we clearly detected post-operative centripetal retinal displacement. Post-op OCT revealed closure of the macular hole and release of retinal choroidal coalescence with improving best corrected visual acuity. Uh, unfortunately, we have also some limitation in the management of traumatic macular holes, which include that the, we have only small studies with a single clinical cases of traumatic macular hole, and most often there were no comparison group with a lack of clear indication for, for choice of the surgical procedure. We don't use uniform classification traumatic macular holes. Someone use gas, some of us use international vitro macular traction study group. We have not uniform criteria for describing the hole, how to measure correctly the hole, uh, which size use basal, minimum, minimum lineal dimension, or some, some kind of macular uh, hole indexes. Uh, now we present one case. We present a clinical case. It's uh, uh, this is a man after a blasting injury. Uh, he was operated uh, previously. Sorry, he was operated several times by our colleagues uh, for game of thumbs and uh, retinal detachment. At the time of examination, he had pseudofacia and. Uh, He had cerdifacia and uh, silicone uh, oil uh, tamponade. We removed silicone oil and uh, performed hydraulic centripetal macular displacement technique, trying to mobilize as much as possible and bring together the edges of the hole. However, this was not possible due to extensive and very strong broad subretinal adhesion. It was decided to apply an inverted ILM flap technique, but given the very large diameter hole, additionally fixed it, the superior ILM flap in autologous solution of platelet rich fibrin. several drops solution. It worked good and the ILM flap uh, completely covers the macular hole and fixed 
and operation was completed by injection 20% of SF6. Unfortunately, after one week, there was a recurrent retinal detachment caused by a new peripheral tear. It is interesting to note that strong cohesion between ILM flap and opposite edge of macula hole even on the detached retina. And now from one very large hole, we got to one large and one small plus retinal detachment. Next, our plan prepared two free ILM flaps and move them to the hole under the PSCL. It's not so easy, it's a problem to, because it's very hard to stride it, the flap under the PSCL. And one flap was rolled and not covered as I want. Then in the laser and the silicone oil reinjection. In a three months, we removed silicone and retinal still attached. OCT reveal complete closure of the small hole and partial closing of the second large hole. BCV slightly improved to 0.15. Our message to close large traumatic macular holes sometimes necessary to use several techniques simultaneously. Closing such holes is possible, but improving vision is problematic. The larger the hole, the greater the chance of healing by secondary intention. And sometimes traumatic macular holes are more traumatic than macula. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rubin, for your exciting presentation. I completely agree that uh, if in, in such severe cases, we should use um, several techniques. Could I ask you, if you, yes. in this case, uh, if you did not plan to use an inverted flap, do you always do uh, inject and inject BSS under the retina before the ILM peeling? No, not, 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 of course, because uh, only in cases where the hole is too, too large or in cases with subretinal uh, severe adhesion, uh, my approach, I try to, to, as much as possible, to connect the hole, to uh, age the hole. And uh, if I understand that it's not possible, I use the flap without, without maybe uh, retinal relocation technique or it's, uh, that, technique, that technique has many different uh, name, is uh, retinal expansion technique, is uh, retinal detachment, posterior pole detachment. But the reason is the same, is uh, BSS, mobilization of the retina, trying to, to move edges uh, together. Thank you. And what is your approach, routine, uh, routine approach for idiopathic macular holes? Um, for my, in my hands, I prefer standard macular hole surgery with LM peeling. Uh, even in cases uh, before 600 micron diameters. After that, or in myopic cases, or in chronic cases, I use uh, a line flap technique, or maybe some, some modifications. For me, very interesting idea to use non-inverted uh, flap transposition LM, and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I agree with uh, Remington Todd Ione that island peeling is a really dangerous procedure for retina and with Carlos Matea dealing with the retina uh, complication. But uh, uh, my patient uh, not, not, not so often have complaints of his quality of vision, even in island peeling. Uh, That's why in my hands, uh, standard procedure is island peeling and SF6 and one one day post uh, uh, phase down position. Uh, for my experience, we performed a CT in post-op period and uh, saw, detected that maybe 90% of cases uh, after one day, host, uh, clo uh, hole closed. Thank you. And uh, do you use hydraulic displacement for 
uh, non traumatic macular holes also? Uh, not so often, only if a very large macular hole or it's chronic or it's a reoperation, it's persistent or refractory macular holes. In such cases, yes. Uh, this procedure uh, doesn't work in uh, myopic cases because uh, it's too elongate posterior pole and retina can't, can't move uh, together. That's why in myopic macular holes, I, I prefer a lens lab technique. Thank you. Do, uh, do you use um, intraoperative OCT? Unfortunately, not. And could I ask this question from our participants to all our panelists? I do not use either uh, intraoperative OCT because it's not available in my practice. I didn't use it. Uh, you know, some cases may be may very useful, but you know, I don't think in a normal cases are useful. Then you know, I, I don't. I, we don't. We didn't use it. I agree. Uh, okay. So we tried uh, to do this on Lumera uh, microscope, uh, but uh, after air tampering, after exchange, uh, the quality of picture. It's very poor. Yeah, very poor and. Uh, the problem is that if you, you know, don't need. So, some people say, you know, um, it's very useful because you can you can look at these the, the OCT and find the place to begin the pill. You know, <laughs> you know, the quality of image with the staining with the dye is by far you know thousand times better than you know the OCT image in the in the OCT than you know uh, you know the, with the blue or, or the the dyes you used. You know, so it's. For me, it's not that. But in some cases, in high myopsy and REMC, I think you agree with that. You know, in, in a skysis, for example, that you peel, you, you try not to cross the fovea, and you see something, you know, very, 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 um, very um, 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 white, and you say, oh my God, I did a hole or not. Then in these cases, I would like to, you know, to, to have um, 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 an OC. Yeah. To be sure. I completely agree, yeah. But at the if you remove the ILM before, what's the next step? What, yeah. are, you, what are you going to do? You know, put a, a flat there, you know, you know it's difficult, yeah. Uh, in such case, Carlos, if I have suspicion about that I tragedy call in posterior cephaloma white area in myopic case, I use dye. Uh, if it's go behind the retina, some part, uh, uh, to find the area that it go behind the retina and I uh, show that the whole is formation, nitrogen core formation or tear happen there. And otherwise, uh, sometimes it's hardly possible to define this nitrogenic uh, small hole with introp OCT, I think. It's not uh, possible. It's not diff easy to define it. But dye is maybe more, more uh, effective to find uh, some uh, breaks, some holes, uh, more effective than, I think, introp OCT. Then I, one thing that Andre uh, mentioned um, is that in high myops, to avoid to lose hydraulic, you know, the detachment, and I totally, I, I fully agree, because you know at the end, remember that the retina is stretched down. You know, this is very stretched, and you, you only need more holes. You know, <laughs> you have a micro hole, you want more holes, then you know the retina is so stretched that these holes may 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 enlarge. And I had cases, you know, may enlarge, and then you you, you have a totally mess. Then you know, I I, do, I, do, I wouldn't in 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 a metropic eyes perhaps a good idea, and, and may 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 close these big holes. But you know, in high myops, I agree with you that you know it's not a good idea to make more holes in the staphyloma area. Mm -hmm. I agree with you absolutely. Mm -hmm. Carlos, uh, could you continue? Okay. I go. Well, yeah, thanks. It's um, difficult to say more things, you know, after seeing these wonderful videos and wonderful techniques. But, you know, let me tell you why, you know, macro hole in high mimes is different. You know, let me tell you four things that are very important for me. The first, macro holes tend to occur in a younger age um, compared to um, uh, emetropic eyes. And, you know, you can find macro holes in 50, uh, 45, 50 years of age. The second thing is that uh, in many cases, macro holes are difficult to be seen. Remember this, you know, 
in all high myops that you have in your office, all these myops have to have OCT. And it's very important that the, any myops say, okay, I see some distortion, always perform an OCT because you will discover some macro holes yet you don't see it in the microscopy. We know that in high myopia, high myopia you, a macro hole can evolve to a retinal detachment that is very rare in a metropic macro holes. And a spontaneous resolution must be very rare because I saw this case many years ago, as you can see here, but you know, at the end, I saw that I saw a spontaneous resolution, but you know, you can see here, you know, after one month, the macro hole seemed closed, but no, the macro hole, you know, uh, the macro hole was not closed, the macro hole reopened. And, you know, I never saw a macro hole high myop uh, closure or closure spontaneously. Let me tell you that, you know, macro, high myopic macro holes have two different macro holes. You know, first, macro hole without disguises, that the aspect in the OCT is pretty similar to a metropic eyes. You know, we know that longer axial length have a high risk of failure. And we, have, we, we know that visual prognosis is really worse than the metropic macro holes. And the other type of macro holes is macro hole with disguises. And you know, this was described by Kuhn and Tano many years ago, 2006, I remember. And they have worse anatomical and visual prognosis, and they have greater tends to have tend to have a greater staphyloma height and greater risk to um, retinal detachment. Look at this. What about macro hole without skysis? We have improved a lot. Ramsey uh, showed wonderful techniques doing this. And, but is, we, we have improved uh, anatomically because two things, not only one, uh, the use of inverted flap, of course, but also because we have a better knowledge of a peritoneal structure. This is very important. Look at this. These are three series, one of series of mine, one series of Michaleska, and one series from uh, the group of Grazia Pertile. Um, we, 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 uh, we study 33 eyes with a mean axial length of 32. All the cases have to have more than 30 millimeters. The staphyloma in all cases, the series are not exactly the same, but at the end, in all of these series, we, using the better flap, we were able to close almost 100% of the case. I have to, uh, you know, reopenings, but you know, at the end they were close again. Then, you know, anatomical prognosis is very good. But look at this. Look at the visual improvement. Visual improvement in our series was not that good. You know, was only 40% of the patients have visual improvement compared to 94% in the group of Michaleska. But there is no difference because the group of Michaleska mean preparative visual acuity was 20 over 200, while our mean preoperative visual acuity were 20 over 80. Then, you know, we had cases more, you know, earlier than the group of Michaleska. But at the end, all of the three series ended with the same vision, 2050. And this 2050, it seems to be repeated. Then, you know, 2050 is a, is a post-operative visual acuity you have to have in mind in these high myo patients. Uh, Ramsey showed different, uh, different types of, you know, up and down, temporal to nasal, partial eye on the up and down envelope, or retracting door of Tamar Mambu. Let me show you the first case. This is a high myope. You know, the, the actual length is 32 something. I, I will, I'm going to show you. I want you to, um, to, uh, to pay attention in this. Can you see my pointer in the screen? Yes. Okay, look at this. Look at this over the retina. This layer makes that many cases, failed cases in high myopes are because the surgeon previously didn't remove the internal limiting membrane. Then always try to find this double, you know, double layer, double, um, um, double sign in the, in the inner part of the retina because this means that you will have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. Uh, look at this almost 36 millimeters of axial length. This is a typical macro hole, this is a contact lens. And the second thing I want to tell you is re-stain. Always re-stain. Look at this. These are part of the internal limiting membrane, but also part of the posterior hyaline. In these kind of patients, the posterior hyaline is almost always there. Then you have to stain, re-stain, that just to be sure that you don't leave any tissue around the macro hole. This is all envelope. You know, I, st I, I, I stopped this technique and I, I use the technique of only one layer over the macro area. And I use the up and down flap. Look at this. At the end, you put the flap, you know, 
from the upper part to the down part, and then you aspirate in the inferior part of the retina. Then all of these fluid currents that go from the periphery to the posterior pole tend to flatten, you know, the, uh, the embedded flap towards the inferior part, and you are closing the, the, uh, the macro hole. Look at this. The key point in high myops that this is not in other kind of macro holes. You have to distinguish between the posterior hyaloid and the internal limiting membrane. That is almost constantly there, almost constantly. Look at this. The difference is, is, is stop it. Don't, don't worry, Tatiana. I stopped the video. No, no, I, I, I'm not sure. You saw it. Okay, then, you know, the difference between them when you I, I don't use TMC, I, I know that many surgeons, they use it, but I don't use it. You know, the difference is that the posterior hyaloid is elastic and has a very poor staining, very irregular staining, while the ILM has a perfect staining and is very rigid. It's thousand times the other layers of the retina. Look at the difference. Look at this. We are peeling now the posterior hyaloid. This is not the internal limiting membrane. Look at this irregular stain. Then we re-stain and this is the internal limiting membrane. It's very rigid. It's very difficult in high myopes to have a single sheet. But you know, at the end, we peel around and look at this. Uh, as Ramsey showed before, look at this. You know, you don't have layers here. The visual prognosis is big macro hole, of course, but you know, the visual prognosis is limited because you don't have the layers, you don't have the outer uh, limited membrane. Let me show you this case. This case happened to me, you know, I, I saw these patients for 10 years and, and he has a skysis. And, uh, you know, six months ago, uh, no, one, one year ago, this patient developed a retinal detachment. Look at this. This is the case. Uh, we, were, we were controlling this skysis. Visual acuity was very good, 0.8. But at the end, this patient developed a retinal detachment with these three breaks in the nasal side. Then after a year, a year later, the patient showed a macro hole. Then look at this. Again, I use contact lenses. You will see now we are removing the, the entire capsule. We are staining now. And then look at, look at the magnification. I understand. I don't see the mid periphery, but I can see the veins. I can see everything. I can see, you know, the, the shadow of the vessels over the RPE. Then, you know, you, you begin to peel this, uh, this, um, um, this um, internal limiting membranes you can see here. But I'm not sure that I peel all the internal limiting membrane, and I'm going to re-stain because you know you have to be sure there is no any remnant. For me, it's very important to don't leave any remnant of tissue around the macro hole to just to relax all the posterior ball. And look at this. Then we are using brilliant blue. We we don't use triple blue for this because of the toxicity of the RP. Look at the internal limiting membrane now. You see it perfect. Then it is very important. Key point now. You have to trim this to do the, the bird flap. Then many surgeons say, I stop it. You know, I, I, I stop the video. Many surgeons say, um, um, uh, use a high speed and a low aspiration. And I say the contrary. Use a lower speed. And if you have this EVA uh, dork machine, then change your aspiration to the uh, peristaltic pump. Then you, you play, for example, five cc's. This is very low aspiration and go there. Look at, look at the, the, you know, the, the cutter. Look at the cutter, it's clack, 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 and very low aspiration. It's under control. If you use higher, you know, speed, you know, the tissue tends to go away. It doesn't tend to go to you. It doesn't tend, it goes away from your cutter. Then at the end, I aspirate down, and this is the lucency that Ramsey showed before. This is one month after surgery. This is going to, to disappear. What about the second group of macro holes? Let me tell you, you will see by far less macro holes of this type than the other type. Macro hole with disguises is a very rare. I have pretty love, you know, a lot of cases, but, but you know, it's, it's, it's more rare. You know, you will see one of these every 40 cases of, uh, no, you know, macro holes without disguises. And the literature says that, you know, this one results in closure rate was very low. Then in 2014, uh, uh, we reported this series using macro buckles to close these holes. And, you know, visual acuity was pretty the same that I was obtaining in, in cases with in better flap in the other, in the other. We were the first to put a light in the, in the endoplom, you know, was published in 2013. 
But Ramsey and others, Ramsey, you remember me in Egypt, you know, we were discussing this. And uh, Ramsey, Ramsey told me, why, why, why you use, you know, uh, you know, macro buckets? You don't have to use them. And, you know, but Ramsey and others, you know, try to convince me. And I said, okay, perhaps you're right. And then I, I, I well, this is, this as the series continues, you, you never have 100%. I had in series, but at the end, I failed in two cases, as you can see here. But, you know, it's pretty good results in these cases, it was 90 93 percent of close rate and then i had this case and this case was in uh, three years ago almost three years ago and and i said okay perhaps you're right and we don't have to use macro backups in these cases and then i did the surgery and this is the surgery you know i did my vitrectomy again the same principles try to find the posterior hyaluron this is always there this is the posterior hyaluron this is not the internal limiting membrane okay look at this irregular staining elastic it goes wherever it goes Restain again. This is internal limiting membrane. Okay, this is very rigid. Then I start in the inferior part of the retina, trying to to make like a capsulotomy around the macro hole. Look at this. You can see perfect where you grasp the uh, you grasp the uh, internal limiting membrane. Then you clean it. You you trim this uh, to to place this wonderful large you know, in better flap, I use, as, as I mentioned before, I use superior to inferior. My, my, my patients leave the OR walking. Then, you know, I always try to, to, to the, the, this fluid coming down to maintain the flap in its position. I aspirate down and, you know, it stays there. Then Tatiana, the result is, you know, Renzi told me the result has to be perfect. And then this is a wonderful result. You know, this is macro hole was open and the perfect embedded flap. This is, this is 45, years, 45 days after such. A, the patient was very angry because at the end, the patient was sent to me because they wanted I do, you know, a macro buckle. Then, um, then I, I proceed to the macro buckling. And uh, let me show you how the steps, you Tatiana asked me about the macro buckles, then uh, let, me, let me show you this. You know, the macro buckles that I use, that I think, is the best solution is the macro buckles that um, you know uh, uh, are located in the supratemporal quadrant. As you can see, we are going to open the supratemporal quadrant, the conjunctiva, two millimeters from the limbus, and then we place a matrix suture pointing where you think the phobia is. Let me tell you, very difficult, very difficult. It's never there, but you know, try to go to the posterior pole never to the to the optic disc. Then I went there and I began to touch, as, as, as Renzi mentioned, I began to touch the flap. And at the end, I, I touched the flap, I touched the flap and I broke the flap. And then the flap disappeared. And then I, with, you know, was very difficult because it floats and it's very difficult to put it again in the, inside the hole. Then I used two, um, uh, two flexible loops, as you will see now, and they're performing good. And at the end, I was I was lucky. I, I put the, the you know the internal limiting membrane uh, over the retina, and then I went there and I put this uh, this uh, piece of internal limiting membrane inside the inside the hole because I I I, 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 I when I do this kind of surgery, I peel a large in this myops, not in a metropic eyes, but I, I peel a lot of intermediate membrane to the arcades. Then look at this, the, the Bluetooth was there. This is the, this is the macro buckle I use. It's a, I don't have any proprietary interest in the macro buckles. And look at this, it's a light. And this is a, a metacrylate. This is not flexible. It's different to Ando, but it has the advantage to Ando. This is rounded. The Ando has the problem with is the square borders. I tried to Japanese to change it, but they didn't. Say, they didn't. You know, they didn't change it. And then this is rounded, and it's very. You know, it's, it's very convenient for the for the indentation. Then we put this um, through the previous matter suture, and then turn on the light and turn off the light. Don't leave. Do, don't leave the, the light turn on because you know you know for the toxicity then be careful because you are under the phobia. Then you, you, you say, okay, it's, it's right. The, the blue dot was there, at this point was there, but at the end, at the final aspiration, the blue dot disappeared. And then I didn't have any flap inside the hole. And the result was the macro hole closed. Then, you know, the, the improvement was not that good. This patient is 20 over 100, something like this. But I continue, Ramsey, I continue doing cases without macro buckles. Yes to no, because only one case is nothing. Okay? 
then this is the aspect, you know, stable for three years, 200 over 100, you know, the C's disappear. And then um, look at this. This is a series of cases. These are eight cases. The first case I show you before, and you see some cases. But look at the, the case number eight. The case number eight had a very good piece of QT, 20 to 32. And if you look carefully, the picture of the OCG, macro hole is not closed. Macro hole is open. And this is seven months after the surgery. But the patient has a good vision. And you can see here, you see the flap there, but you see here, there is a hole. Small hole, but there is a hole. Then, you know, you know then my last case, Ramsey, and this is for you. This is my last case. This is the case. This is, this is one month ago. And this patient came and I was in this series, making this series, and I saw this patient. I said, okay, let's go for a, um, for a you know, inverted flap, no problem. And then I did the surgery, as you can see here. Then I went there, vitrectomy, as primarily showed, staining, as you can see here, you remove. And then I realized that the posterior hyaluride is there with the staining, not with trenzinolone. Then I remove the posterior hyaluride, as you can see here. Don't be rushed, don't, don't run, you know, very slow, be careful with the periphery. And then I stain. And then in some, you know, uh, then I remove the staining. This is, this, and then some surgeons say that this is very important to remove the, leak, the you know, the, the fluid that is inside the hole to improve the results. And then I went there with a 41 gauge cannula to remove this viscous fluid that has to be inside the hole. Then I went there under fluid, of course. Then I went there just to try to remove this fluid. And then I began my peeling. As you can see my, my unification, you can see the fibers, the, the nerve fiber layer. And then I, I went there, first inferior, I trim, as, as I told you before, low aspiration and cutting peristaltic pump. And then I went down with this, uh, you know, rexis around the fovea and put this flap over the, the macro hole. And, and look at this, I put platelet concentrate in this case. This fluid that you see there is platelet concentrate as a, as a glue. I, I don't think it has any, you know, um, a proliferative, you know, property, but it remains there, believe me. You know, you, it's, it's very easy. Then finite fluid exchange, aspirating down. And Ramsey, the answer is the macro hole is open. And you know, perfect in very flap. What would be your next step, Ramsey? So, uh, Carlos, how many days after surgery did you receive these pictures, this OCT? This OCT, this is one month. One month. This is one month. So, uh, with inverted flap technique, uh, my, uh, I have not huge experience. I have like uh, maybe less than 10 cases with inverted flap technique. Uh, but uh, I experience that in idiopathic macular hole. Mm -hmm. When I see these pictures after surgery, like uh, five to 10 days after surgery, I say, wait these patients and follow this patient like a several month. And as Michalaska noticed the same experience during this follow up period, and I observe feeling of this empty area under the uh, ILM flap is with glial proliferations. Mm -hmm. And um, therefore I ask is, how many days after surgery you see these pictures. And uh, I would prefer you maybe to uh, follow this patient without doing second uh, surgery. Uh, if you see these pictures without, without doing second surgery for a few weeks, then if there is nothing changed, you can uh, go. Because in myopic patients, behavior is different than idiopathic case and the proliferation, the glial proliferation in myopic patient is less than the idiopathic case. And therefore, uh, the mentality, the technique is in idiopathic case, it maybe it not, not, not doesn't work in myopic patients. So therefore in myopic patient, we may try different technique. We may need to try, we may have to try different techniques such as buckle and the others or PRP and the others. But in idiopathic patients, I have really huge experience with this technique. And when we follow this patient like several weeks, several months, I observe usually step by step, gradually feeling of this whole area with glial proliferation. Yes, as you mentioned, as you said, you know, high myopes are totally different. As yeah. 
because because this is in a posterior staphyloma. And the problem in these cases is that when the inner retina tend to go down, the macro hole tend to enlarge, not to close. Yeah. The tendency yeah. of the macro hole is to go to a greater circumference and then to open. Then, you know, I, I will have to have a decision. Okay, um, uh, as a summary, uh, we have improved a lot in uh, because we know better the uh, vitro retinal interface in high myopes than before, and it's clearly different to emetropic eyes. Clearly different, but you know, uh, visual function, visual results are not that good than emetropic eyes. Always, when you doubt, even you don't see the macro hole in all of your myopes that you know they complain metamorphopsia always yesterday i saw a patient that you came to me because metamorphopsia i tried to find the hole i didn't find the hole and i'm very used to this and you know and was a macro hole there then you know always perform oct in these patients you will be astonished how many macro holes you discover you know distinguish when you are in the surgery distinguish between disguises or the posterior hyoid that is many in the majority of cases there and and between remnants and the ILM, re-stain, always re-stain to be sure that the ILM is completely removing, removed uh, around the hole because it's the main, for me, it's the main cause of failure in high myops and in eyes um, uh, longer than 30 millimeters of uh, the majority of eyes of high myops are used in bird flat technique. And in macro hole with disguises, my sentence is try first with the better flap, but you know, uh, do macro buckles that I'm going to do in this case uh, in, the, in the previous surgery phase. And that's all I wanted to, to share with you, Tatiana. Do you have happy end for the last case? Excuse me? What the end of the last case? What is what's the result? Oh, no, I don't have because, you know, this, she was operated, uh, you know, 45 days ago. And this is the last... To be continued. And then this will continue. The patient will come to, uh, to Barcelona because it's from outside, but she will come to Barcelona, I think, in um, you know, one week, 10 days. And I think I, I will do one back for this case. Carlos, maybe I can suggest you to, to follow this, the last case, like a few months more, because like maybe like uh, two months more. And I really wonder what will happen. So if, there, if nothing is changed in this patient, even after like several months, so we can be agree that uh, the proliferation rate is really very, very low in macular hole case, and therefore we don't need to wait. So you have a huge experience with macular hole and resistant case, and it's a great talk. And, but uh, as you mentioned, that's the most important point is that we should resist, rest stain or rest stain during the peeling of uh, ILM. It's very important because it's really hardly possible to see the details with uh, only one staining is, and usually we peel the posterior remnants of posterior how do you, before, uh, after one stain, uh, the first staining, then we can uh, reach the ILM and stain the ILM and peel the ILM. This is really a very, very key point, and I agree with you. Great talk, thank you. And the problem, Ramsey, you know, is the patient, because the first patient I remember, I wait for near three months, and the patient was very angry. And this patient, in contact, the last patient, you know, he, she saying, me, doctor, I came here, and you know, uh, was 2,400, now it's 2,400. And, you know, um, you know, they sent it to me, to, to, to you, because, you know, you were an expert. And, and you know, macro hole is open because I showed them macro, you know, the, the OCD of, my, of the patient. To, open, to, yeah. And then, you know, he told me, uh, do something, do something. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, no, I understand, yeah. To, to, you know, my recall or something like this. And, you know, the, 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 when the patient knows this, this is a macro hole, you know, they, they, they you know, and the second thing is that you have a, this kind of macro hole in a metropic eye, you can wait without the risk of retinal detachment. But in a high myope, you have the risk of retinal detachment. You know, if this happens, this patient will be very angry. And then you have to run. Then, you know, I, 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 I agree with you that perhaps you know, I, I saw one of the, your cases that, you know, I, I would never uh, expect, you know, the macro hole with this uh, open, close macro hole at the end was, you know, closed macro hole with all the layers. I, 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 I never saw that. But, you know, it's an amazing case. But, you know, I, I never saw it in my in high myops. If the macro hole is open, it's open. And mm. you wait, but it's open. In, in my experience in myops. Let me ask another question, uh, Tatiana, to the Carlos. 
what do you think about silicon oil uh, tamponade in myopic cases? Uh, maybe uh, would it be better to long duration tamponade in such patients? What's your experience, Carlos? I don't know. I, don't, I, I try not to use it, um, a silicon oil in high myopsis because at the end, um, uh, um, the results, Brooks McGuinn reported many years ago and other surgeons that, you know, silicon oil don't improve the results of closing the micro hole. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but, but the, I, I thought about this case because at the end, you have something pressing down during more time. And perhaps could be a solution, but I try not to use silicon oil. It requires a second operation. And I, I think you have to be perfect in the first surgery. I think yeah. not only my, 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 you know, I always try to be, um, um, you know, um, have my goal in the first surgery, you know, not mm -hmm. to, you know, try first and then, you know. And then. Thank you, Dr. Mateo. Could we ask you, you to show us the outcome of this patient on our next webinar? Absolutely, absolutely. It'll be interesting for all of us, for our for participants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Your presentation is very emotional, very informative. Thank you very much. Uh, do you prefer staining in, uh, the posterior hyaloid with dye, not with transin alone? Yeah, I do. I didn't use transin alone. You know why? Because when I use transin alone. Then after, when you have to work with the forceps to peel all of these things, you know, these grounds of tremcerone is always in my forceps, and I hate this. Then I, I, I try to stain with, with Brilliant Blue, and then I, I'm used to see, you know, if the posterior hyaloid is there or, you know, the staining, and then I stain one, I remove what I can, and then I re-stain it, and I see the internal limiting. Be believe me, the main cause of failure in without disguises macro holy high myops is to fail to remove the ILM. This is for me, this is so clear. And to remove the ILM after a failed cases you know, is very tough. It's very difficult. And you know, the prognosis is not that good. Then try to be good and perfect the first surgery. It's different to, to emetropic eyes. In emetropic eyes, it's not, that, it's not that difficult. But, you know, in high myopes especially, it's more difficult. I think, in my, my opinion, my, 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 my hands. Thank you. But if you use um, non-contact lens system with, um, and you have the view of fundus, you can use, you can see the bursa primacularis very clearly and uh, indicate posterior hyaloid detachment with cata, with vacuum. Yeah, sure, 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 absolutely, absolutely. You, you know, uh, always we will we'll discuss um, uh, about the use of contact or non-contact. You know, at the end, you prefer what they're used to. Then uh, Ramsey is, has, uh, you know, is a wonderful surgeon with the ABOS too for, for many years. And, you know, he, he, he loves it and, and his perfect surgery and we, we, we saw it. But, you know, um, um, you know the, the quality of image with the contact, I think is, you know, I... I, I you cannot compare it. And I'm not that used to, 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 to peel the ILM with no contact. Uh, I'm not used to this. And for me, it's very difficult. And, you know, I, I really you know, admire people doing this. But, then, you know, when I'm in a macro hole, I'm in the macro hole. I don't okay. see it happening in the periphery because normally it's happening nothing. Then um, um, because of this, I prefer to have all of the image and try to build the ILM with the contact lens. Um, the contact. Which contact lens do you use, Carlos? I think I try many. Um, I use the, uh, you know, Abby Grimblatt, Abby, Abby Grimblatt, you know him. Um, he has the advanced visual instruments and the, this lens is a macro window. This is uh, difficult to manage because it has um, a ring in the lens, but you know, the, the view, you know, I, I try many lenses and, and, and they are, they are Plenty of good lenses, good, perfect lenses. But you know, for this, it's amazing. The, the feel is so, so, so small, but the quality is so, so impressive. And you know, um, I have them for, for many years and they stay the same. And the quality is very, 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 very good. Very good, very good. And you have to use, you know, the, to be used to, to, to work in a small place. And for, for your surgery, you will see the flap, you know, amazing, you know, amazing. Yeah, I can ask you, Carlos, uh, do you have experience with 3D visualization? Could you compare with a traditional? Yeah, uh, you know, um, I have the 3D. 
and um, I, I don't use it. And, um, you know, I think it's amazing. It's an amazing system. This is a perfect system. You know, the quality of the image is amazing. But, you know, you, you, have, you have been never in my OR. <laughs> in my OR, no one speaks. No, no one speaks. No one, no one um, you know, he, um, music. No, sil total silence. And no, I don't want people moving in the, in the OR. You know, it's totally quiet. <laughs> then, you know, yeah, then, you know, uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the screen, you know, 55 inches screen, perfect screen, wonderful image, but because the image is wonderful. You have a better, you know, deep of image, deep of focus. But, you know, when I'm in my oculars, I'm, I'm you know, I'm alone and, 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 and I do my work alone. And then, and for me, it's, it's, it's better. I, I don't see any, but I think in the future, uh, these systems will, 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 will be there because we need to remove the microscope from there because it's not logical that you say, oh, ergonomics are perfect because I'm sitting like this and I have to look like, like this and you have to look to the side. You know, then when you remove the, the head of the microscope, and you have your screen in front of you and you have the OCD here or other, you know, there are other visualization systems that, you know, will appear, you know, cameras inside the eye. There are some prototypes there, cameras with 4K inside the eye, you know, 20 gauge. Then, you know, this will change the world. Then I think at the end, we will operate with this system. Then if you have it, you know, use it to be, to be used to this. But if I have to tell you my truth, my truth is I, I don't use it now, right now. Thank you. I have one question to you again. Uh, in what cases do you not do surgery in case of myopic macular hole with kisses and high myopia? When I, do you not do your surgery? Well, you know, this is a good question. Almost always do it. I almost always. The problem is, in some cases, you see these white areas of atrophy in the center of the macula, and you see skysis there, and you see the macro hole, and you operate on them, and the vision goes down. Because these are, these are not full things, macro holes. These are long-term skysis where the, the, you know, the breaches between the inner retina and outer retina disappear. And then you go, you fix it, you close the hole, the retina becomes atrophic, and the patient says, okay, but you know, I see less than before. Then if you have a big area of atrophy in the center with a scar and all of this, and you see this hole, I would say, um, it's, it's very rare that they improve. But if you, if you have good RP, then do it. I am convinced of that. And let me, the last thing, very important, the mistake I made the most in my life with myops, always look at the optic desk, always, because many of these myops have glaucoma. Then be careful with this. You know, look at the optic desk. And I, now, if I, I'm, one of my patients have glaucoma or something like this, I always ask my glaucoma specialist to tell me if I can operate this patient or not, depending on the visual field. If the visual field is very bad, don't touch it because you have the risk to go down with the vision. Then be careful with this. Always look at the optic disc and always the pressure just to know if the patient has a terminal glaucoma, you know, then I think it's not good the operation. What intraoperative pressure do you have? Normally, I use 30 millimeters of mercury. In patients with very bad optic disc, I use 15. But, you know, I never operate high myopes with low pressure. Be careful with this. Because low pressure in a high myope, you, you have the risk of subretinal hemorrhage, choroidals, everything. Then be careful with this. Even with cannulated systems, with perfect valves, you, if you go down to three and you stay three millimeters of mercury for more than five minutes, you will see in some places subretinal hemorrhages. And if one of these affects the phobia, you're done. Your, your, your visual acuity will be lower. Then be careful, low pressure in high myopes. Be careful. And don't leave the eye at the end of the surgery. Don't leave it at, you know, let's say five. Leave it at 10, excuse me, 20, 25, 30 millimeters of mercury. Because, you know, three millimeters of mercury in a high myope, 
I don't know your opinion, Ramsey, but you know, uh, this, the, the eye, the wall is very, uh, you know, the risk of hemorrhagic events are very, you know, are higher than normalized. I completely agree with you, Carlos, in my occupation. And usually I prefer 30 millimeter mercury pressure during work. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I usually work with active uh, uh, intra pressures and uh, with EVA system, dark, uh, and I prefer about 30 millimeters. And agree with you, it's easily, uh, uh, we can see corridors and other complication. Absolutely. Uh, can I ask you, uh, I'll see, uh, how often do you use Siuchi as a finish of your myopic eyes? What? CO? How often do you, do you close the uh, incision Siuchi. with the Siuchi in myopic eyes, high myopic? Oh, in all cases. I'm sorry, in all cases. You know why? Because at the end, I, I, I don't want to have hypotony in the first 24 hours. Then I put these sutures, that the, the day after I put some anesthetic, I remove the sutures. If the patient is, let's say, 15, I remove the sutures, in, in no problem. But you know, um, um, now I, I sleep better doing this than, you know, leave the patient, I, I, I don't do it in all cases, but you know, in the, in the let's say 70, 75, 80% of cases, high myops, I closure. I, I, I put a suture, this is two minutes and I sleep perfect. Well, I think you but, use 25 gauge cannula, Carlos? Um, I use 23, my friend, because you know, I yeah. think, um, I, you know, the stiffness, at the end, remember, you are very far from the end. Then, you know, more, the honest, if the anesthesia of the eye, if the, um, you know, the, if the patient can move a little bit, then your forces move, move a lot. And then with the, with the contact lens systems, you see them moving very large. With the non-contact, the movement is not a problem. But you know, if you see the, with the contact, with the small field, you see the forces moving like this around. Then, you know, um, um, I try to use tw uh, 23, I'm, I'm sorry for that, I saw your statistics and, you know, 25 was, was amazingly high, you know, in Japan would yeah. be 27, but, you know, but I, I was astonished at this. And air, you know, you, you, in, the, in the pools were air. You know, the problem with air is that if you have a lower level of gas inside the eye the day after the meniscus and the patient, they don't make the prone position, you know, with air, the fluid will touch the, the macro hole. Then, you know, you have a risk of, of, um, of, 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 of fate. Then I use, I use SF6. I agree with you, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the 23 gauge, in macular hole case, we need longer instrument. Therefore, 23 gauge in my practice. In my uh, practice, I, in idiopathic case, I use, in all macular hole cases, I use 27 gauge now. And, but except myopic patients, in this case, we need longer instruments and therefore I prefer 23 gauge and, and agree with you that in all, most of this patient needs uh, suturing uh, after uh, surgery to prevent yeah. hypotony. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about you, Dr. Ruban? Do you suture all your cases? Uh, I agree call? completely is there, maybe in my hands is the most uh, difficult complication after surgery of high myopic eyes is hypotony, is hemorrhage, it's some problem. I agree com absolutely that uh, suture, it's uh, not so important, uh, suture less vitrectomy, more important safety vitrectomy. That's uh, all the, the reason. I use 25 gauge, but uh, maybe 50% in high myopic, myopic eyes, I, 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 I guess suture. Mm. Thank you. Uh, what about silicone oil uh, using for recurrent macular hole? Um, for example, like the last case, um, do you prefer to use it? Yeah, Ramsey asked me about this and, um, you know, I, I try to avoid uh, silicone oil in high myopes because at the end they, they may have problems with the pressure and all of this stuff, requires another surgery. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do it, but you know, I think it's a, it's a possibility in a case like this to use, to use silicone oil because the case of Renzi is so, so impressive that, you know, you know it's, a, it's a good possibility. But you know, in high myopes, the things are different because of the posterior staphyloma. The retina is so stretched down. They're so, you know, that, you know, I have a case 
um, I have a geyser with um, the sky season of this stuff. And I, I show in some meetings. And, you know, I went there, I removed the ILM, be careful with the phobia, I didn't cross the phobia. But, you know, at the end, I saw a piece of ILM in a place near the arcade. And then I went there, I tried to, and it produces more hemorrhage there, nothing. You know, I went there, I aspirated the hemorrhage, I didn't see anything. You know, in one month, this small hemorrhage was a hole like this. You know, at the end I ended with silicon oil. Then be careful with this. You know, be careful with the peeling in the high myopes. High myopes is, is by far more complicated than emetropic macro holes or other kind of macro surgery. Thank you. Dr. Kalesnik, what, uh, yes, please. Yeah, in the uh, case of uh, recurrent uh, macular holes, uh, we have a problem. Uh, there is an absence of uh, ILM in the um, whole area. So uh, uh, we used to use um, uh, silicon oil uh, tamponade, but uh, now uh, uh, I suppose that uh, PRP will suit here. Uh, oh, yeah, you, you, but, but you know, in the. You. In the platelet rich uh, plasma, this is a great, you know, but you know, uh, I think the, uh, I don't know what you believe in, in, in the, you know, and the um, 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 factors that produce, you know, regrowing the oh, yeah. <laughs> This is for me difficult to understand. And the, the glue system, you know, the, the, the glue system and, and, and the glue, believe me, I, I have a case of traumatic micro case and a friend of mine operated on him and, and I went there and I put a drop of, under the focal molecule as Ramsey, uh, Ramsey showed and I put a, um, a, 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 you know, a bubble of a platinum rich plasma over the hole and I went with, the, with a piece of ILM from the side and it was difficult to move it into the platelets and it stayed there flat you know, and didn't move with the fluid exchange, this is a problem. When you end the surgery, you add under perforocarbon liquid, you, you have the flap there, and then you, you, you have the risk to yeah, aspirate the flap. It stays there, you know, it stays there. You know, and, there, and there. then I, this glue part of the platinum PRP, I think that th these are great. Try it, try it, because believe me, try it without perforocarbon liquid, because, you know, um, I, I think you will need it. You put it up, you know, a drop under the flap, you put the flap, and at the end, you put another drop and over the flap. You know, um, and you will see it, it will stay there. You aspirate, the, if you do this temporal to nasal flap, aspirate in the optic disc as you do it, aspirate there, and you will see how it stays there. It doesn't move like this, uh, you know, of course, when you don't do this, then try it, try it, it works, it works. Thank you, Dr. Ruba. Well, I would like to know that really gases have much more higher surface tension and burns forth than silicon oil. That's why for me, absolutely not reasonable to use silicon to close the hole. It's much more, less effective than gas. Hmm. And uh, I would like to ask about my colleagues, uh, how often they use forward staring technique in macular hole, in the myopic mac, uh, traction macular pathway for prophylactic or for macular hole for sickness. Is it useful technique for you Absol for the sparing? Absolutely, absolutely. But don't look at this. Two weeks ago, I had a case. I did forward sparing and I had a macular hole. Then it's not 100% effective. You know, I had it, I had it. I had two in my life and I do this for, for many years. But you know, um, um, uh, there are some series from, I think from Egypt, Ramsey, I think that these are from Egypt that say that you can cross the foveal area, no problem. My recommendation always is don't cross the fovea. I don't know what about you, Ramsey. You try to avoid the cross the fovea in the, in the skies of these high myops? No, not really. I agree with you, Carlos. So maybe I can uh, uh, say something about uh, silicon oil tamponade. So I do not have a huge experience either, but uh, in my last case that I present you, we uh, inject silicon oil not to for, for macular hole, for keep the uh, PVR retina attached. And but what I learned in this case, the size of the macular hole was almost uh, 1500 micron, and after silicon oil uh, injections, and the first week we observe flat open, it's very large open of macular hole, and it gradually closed. And three months after surgery, 
the macular hole was completely closed under silicone oil tamponade. I think in this patient, silicone oil, long acting tamponade, it works, helps some things to uh, close to this large macular hole. And therefore I can say that in macular hole, which is larger than 1000 micron, sometimes we observe such patients we have, maybe we can use silicone oil tamponade because in this patient, we need long acting tamponades. So the uh, C3F8, even C3F8 tamponade duration would not be enough to uh, uh, close this patient. So I do not mention about myopic case. So mm -hmm. myopic case has different behavior, yeah. but the other case, maybe we can prefer silicone oil as a long acting uh, tamponade, not a uh, better surface tension. You are, you're, you're right. Dr. Ruben, is uh, gas uh, has uh, better surface tension, but not uh, as long as silicone oil. And in such patient, I uh, prefer silicone oil uh, to close the macular. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I think we may continue and uh, start um, talking about linear holes. What's your approach? Uh, can you show us the picture? Of course, it's, it's known that uh, lamellar holes may not progress for a long time, and sh we should just observe our patients. What's your approach to the treatment of, for example, this macular hole without any complaints, uh, with good visual acuity, without any metamorphopsy, but with this, with such um, picture, uh, Dr. Kolesnik? Uh, in case of uh, degenerative um, lamellar macular hole, uh, uh, of course, it's better to wait and observe the patient. Uh, but if complaints uh, still uh, remain and uh, uh, we see a progression, maybe we can try uh, to make a surgery here, uh, as I showed in our first case. Sometimes uh, it works as minimum to stop the progression and to lose um, uh, of visual acuity. Uh, but um, mostly, uh, we observe the patients. How often do you invite the patient? After months uh, from the first, uh, when we see this um, uh, hole, uh, after three months, and uh, then uh, or twice a year. Thank you, Dr. And Professor Avci. I uh, agree uh, about the observation. If the patient has no complaining about visual disturbance and the patient has a good visual acuity, it's the best way is to uh, follow this patient without any intervention, any manipulations. And uh, with uh, informing the patient about the disturbance of visual acuity, maybe we can follow these patients uh, like every three months or every four months. Uh, but if there's no complaint, I prefer following this patient. Thank you. Dr. Matea. Let me, let me ask you two things. Is this yeah. patient, is, is your patient? Yes. It's a high myo? No. It's not a high myo? No, no. Sure. How, yes. old, how old is he? Um, more or less. It's more or less. More or less 50. Oh, 50. Okay. Okay. <laughs> only, only two comments. Look at, look at the, you know, over the retina, you see this tissue that I was uh, telling you in the, my presentation. This tissue is what prevents the uh, UPL DILM. Of course, if the patient has no signs, symptoms, or poor vision, or whatever, don't, don't, don't do anything because the visual progression of this patient is not that good. But some of these patients in high myops may progress to full thinness macro holes. And, you know, uh, be careful with this control. Every, I, I control these patients every six, every six months, something like this. And I, I explain them what, what are the symptoms to, um, to, um, to control. Yeah. That's a very thin choroid also. Very thin choroid. It's very thin choroid. That's yeah. correct. And it, if, she, if she has any complaints, then um, I would explain that the possibility, the, the complaints are metamorphopsia or loss of vision. These are the two main complaints of these patients. And if, if it's demonstrated that the patient is losing vision, I would do the surgery. And the, 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 how to do it is to put part of this tissue inside the hole. It was described in Japan. You know, this, you're peeling to the center and to put it inside. Uh, this is the, th the thing I would do. Thank you. Dr. Ruben. 
What's your approach? Uh, my approach is lamella macula hole or gen degeneration type is maybe not so usual for surgery procedure. We all like to, to operate and we have a good results, but unfortunately such cases is not so good for surgery. And I agree it's maybe uh, uh, indication for surgery should be a decrease of vision. It's maybe if patient lose some two line, maybe logmar or his vision less than 0 0.5, and uh, complaints for metamorphopsia, for me, it's indication for surgery. Because uh, sometimes a surgery is not so easy. We sometimes, and depends of type of uh, epiretinal proliferation. Uh, in such cases, not so rare to uh, dense membrane or non-tractional or yellow tissue, which not so easy to remove uh, and grabs uh, forceps uh, during surgery. The, for me, uh, I would uh, like to maybe waiting for surgery. Thank you. Can you show us the next picture with your the whole? This patient uh, also has no complaints, but the picture is not beautiful. What's your approach, and Andrew? Uh, is it another type? It's really tractional type or uh, pseudo hole. It, for me, it's enough good uh, indication for surgery if patient uh, lose some vision. And uh, I would like to remove all membrane. And in my practice, uh, I, I got a good result in such patient, even when morphology for Vela not so ideal and the retina looks like thick, thicker, but uh, visual enough good especially if ellipsoid zone and LM uh, intact. Thank you. Let me, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you one thing. Imagine this, this patient has vision uh, 0.6 and has cataract, nuclear cataract. And what would be your approach? You would do everything. You would do cataract and see if the vision improves. This, uh, the patient has no metamorphopsia. Only, you know, he said, well, I lose vision, but he has a, um, a cataract, you know, nuclear cataract. You could do, do the combined surgery or you proceed to cataract and wait to see what's going on after cataract surgery. I prefer combined surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, combined and uh, for, for my opinion, not so necessary to perform uh, two procedure and uh, for me, it's easy, uh, more compliant for patient, for surgery, for surgeons. That's why uh, combined procedure. One so maybe I can answer this question, uh, Carlos. I would not agree with Dr. Ruben. If the patient has 0.6 vision with nuclear cataract, and with this OCT, in this OCT, we observe clearly, perfectly the retinal layers, the inner nuclear layers is perfectly. There is no ectopic. Uh, foveal layers or, or, or the foveal area. So this is mean that also the ellipsoid is an external limiting membrane is very well. And I would prefer only cataract surgery. And in this patient, uh, the vision may improve maybe uh, up by one point uh, after cataract surgery because the center of the fovea, uh, ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane is very, very good. So in, in such patient, I, I have the same behavior like uh, lamellar macular hole, if there is no visual problems, if there is no hematomorphopsia, uh, and uh, usually prefer follow this patient without uh, touching to retina. And for many years, this patient may, became stable. And uh, if the vision is disturbed, if there is some problem uh, at the hematomorphology of the OCT, like uh, this the ectopic inophobial layer is, is the recently developed, uh, uh, reported in the uh, foveal area in epiretinal membranes. So in that, such patient, maybe we prefer uh, surgery in my practice. I prefer. Thank you. Thank you. We have one question. I think I, I, I would like to ask Dr. Kolesnik. Yeah, it, I, it, I would ask, um, uh, I would say that uh, if patient has uh, complaints, uh, 
especially progressive complaints of, uh, uh, on metamorphopsia, uh, this is a sign of problems uh, with retina. So there is uh, no need to wait uh, and uh, uh, make a surgery in two steps. I mean, cataract surgery firstly and then wait. Uh, if just uh, lose uh, his visual acuity without any problem with quality of vision, yeah, why not? Uh, <clears throat> we can do a uh, cataract surgery first. Uh, but uh, in this case, I would uh, prefer the combined uh, surgery. And uh, even uh, complaints of metamorphopsia will be indication for surgery here because no need to wait uh, long and uh, lose weight. And uh, wait for disorganization of retina and problems uh, in external retina. Now it's okay here, but then after a few months, it will change dramatically, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. Is there any difference in macular hole closure rate between ACP and PRP? How to define the volume of plasma needed to close the macular hole? Uh, is one to drops enough? It's the question of our participant. Can you answer, Anton? Uh, I don't have um, such a big amount of uh, cases so with uh, ACP. Um, but uh, still, um, many data shows that uh, they are comparable, and the main ACP uh, is better because uh, you don't need uh, special um, uh, solutions uh, during the, you know, when perform uh, ACP. Uh, I mean anticoagulant, uh, so. Uh, um, don't have a lot of practice with ACP, but uh, it works also. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, we have one fun part in our webinar. And um, today we are having a quiz. We have a question for our, for our participants. And the person who gives the correct answer to it will, <laughs> will receive a prize. Uh, look, uh, look. Um, please, can you see the question? We have the question. Uh, it has three parts. Can you show us? Are you sharing? I, I think you are. No, no, I asked my colleagues from. From team, um, who I, I spelled, who, when, and where developed and implemented the concept of the first automated cutting instrument for vitreous body. Uh, we will send this question uh, to emails of our participants uh, to email addresses in uh, next future uh, tomorrow. You will have a chance to answer this question as soon as possible. And the first person uh, to send us the correct answer by mail will get a prize, a chance to present video question at our next webinar. And while one small present, it's a prize. Uh, this question comes courtesy uh, of Dr. Ruben. Uh, thank you. The question was, the question was, can you repeat the question? Who was the first, who, uh, who was the first and when um, was, uh, who, who was the first who developed the concept of first automatic cutting instrument, the tractor for vitreous body? Let me tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult question. No, it's not that easy. It's not that yes, we know. Is, there is some problems here, <laughs> but you know, but okay, okay, the question is fine. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. We are waiting for your answers. And we uh, start, we, we have one video question. Can you show us? We ask one of, uh, we have the question for, from the chat and we ask our participant uh, if you want to make video question and he agreed. And now he's here. You can ask, I think, this question for Dr. Ruben because it's about traumatic, make a, a traumatic hole, but all of us uh, can answer, please. Hi. Hi. Hello. Can, can you switch could on you, your could, camera? 
Yes, we, we can we, we can hear you, but we don't see you. Oh. Thank you very much for your program, especially Dr. Avcı. Demet Hocam çok teşekkür ederiz güzel sunumunuz için. I'd like to ask this question. Uh, as you know, as I know, traumatic macular is a bit different than other holes. Uh, is there any exact criteria to uh, determine the surgical intervention type in terms of best corrected visual acuity or uh, macular hole thickness? Uh, I wonder that uh, this question. What's the, is there an exact criteria for the surgical intervention? As you, I know, Uh, uh, traumatic macular hole uh, has uh, a bit capability to uh, self. Uh, uh, I couldn't understand. Is there an exact criteria to weight or surgical intervention in terms of best quality visual equity or macular hole thickness? I'd like to ask mm -hmm. this question. I think, uh, Abdullah. Uh, the question is, let me uh, repeat, what's the surgical time in traumatic macular hole? Do we wait or do surgery uh, immediately after hole uh, diagnose? So, as you know, uh, in traumatic macular hole, we may observe spontaneous closure, especially in uh, young uh, in children, in young patients. And therefore, I prefer to wait like uh, seven to 10 days or some, like two weeks and to observe this patient, uh, if, uh, give a chance to spontaneous closure. If it's not possible, then I prefer uh, surgery, but this is mean that at least two weeks, I prefer to wait and to see and then do surgery. I think it's clear, clear enough for you. Of course, thank you very much. Thank you for this. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ruben. I agree, but uh, maybe my uh, time of waiting more longer, about uh, till two months. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on cystoid edema or the ages. Yeah, it's maybe with hemorrhage or without hemorrhage. Uh, but really, I saw in my practice only two or three cases spontaneous closure. Maybe not so high level as in Japan, for example. But it's very interesting to know your experience and your, your, your results with spontaneous traumatic macular hole closure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me ask you one, thing more, one more thing. Um, in these macro, traumatic macular holes, when you have this RPE disturbance under the macular hole, do you operate? Because you know, at the end, the visual prognosis is very poor, and the, the, you know, the incidence of And attachment is very low, if any. And you know, what, what's your recommendation? You 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 proceed to surgery when you have this RPE disturbance under the under, under the macro hole. What's your? Uh, this is really very uh, controversial uh, case. Uh, this 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 such case, uh, Carlos. You know. But uh, in young patients, usually we observe traumatic macular in young patients. And even in a patient with uh, RP degeneration, I prefer to do surgery and close the hole because in times, if you do not close this uh, hole, uh, in times it may get enlarged and enlarged. And, and therefore I prefer to do surgery. But this is uh, my experience and maybe It's not definite, but maybe you can have different uh, exp uh, uh, behavior. So the other things, um, I have uh, experience in young uh, patients, like one years old, two years old uh, children with traumatic macular hole. If you wait a long period of time, like more than a month, we can see this very rapid enlargement of macular hole with vitreous traction maybe. And I have some such case and therefore, I do, I really afraid to wait a long period of time in uh, young children, maybe in like um, uh, 10, uh, 15 years old children is okay. But in young uh, child, uh, the macular hole may enlarge uh, very fast comparing the other group of patient. And therefore I prefer to do surgery like uh, two weeks after uh, diagnosis of macular hole in such patient. Thank you for your question, dear colleague. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Abdullah.
I would like to ask you to vote again. The, question, the questions are the same. We can see how the opinions change. Uh, the first image, the whole size, 366 microns. And um, the questions, please vote. Can we see the results? Mm -hmm. Island peeling without eddy runs. And if you remember, there were another answer last time. If I'm not mistaken, they were with advanced air tamponade um, without any additional manipulations. One or one, three days position and 25 grips. Thank you. It's interesting. And another image. What's your approach for surgery of this size of macular hole? Can you show us the results? Oh, inverted flap. <laughs> it's nice to see that um, our participants decide to change their opinion. And mm -hmm. the most popular now is inverted flap. For <laughs> they say in the air, you know. <laughs> uh, yes. You know. Uh, flap plus PRP, um, no, no, um, no biological advance is 50%, but uh, PRP 43%. Uh, air tamponade without additional manipulations, three, one, three days and 25 gauge. Thank you. Thank you. We will publish this result. <laughs> and think Good. about it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? Not really. Yes, we have. Thanks to all participants, to all panelists. And it's um, a shame we, we don't have more time because it's too late. Um, we, we are going to make our webinar um, during two hours and uh, thank you all for your enthusiasm first of all and your wonderful contribution for sharing your ex expertise skills uh, your knowledge with us and uh, Dr. Ruban I know you have recently opened your own uh, clinic 
and uh, which is quite incredible. I wish you all the best, best of luck, uh, success and Thank prosperity. You. Thank you. I will, will be very glad to see you in Kiev, in clinic and uh, so, so experts in operating theater. I hope it's only first step. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your, for, for your hospitality, for your skill. Thank you. For, for your, thank you. Thank you very much. And I want uh, to ask our participants, our the meeting, we will send you a letter to collect your feedback. It's important for us. We welcome your comments uh, and suggestions about the ways how to improve our webinar. And um, I also hope um, to see in person in Moscow or in, in every city in our world. And um, I hope very much, very much hope that this webinar was useful and productive and uh, enjoyable for all of us. And um, I want to uh, say thank you for, to Dork for the technical support. And uh, now I think uh, I should say you uh, thank you and um, goodbye. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for your participation. Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you very much. It was a great webinar. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Thank you very much. Bye guys. Bye bye. Bye. bye.